Welcome to another mini video from 2dkmartguru.com. Today I'll be working in Inkscape to show you my workflow to create a miniature storefront. I'll be using basic shapes, text, clip groups and modify with the note tool to create a colorful miniature storefront for the Inkscape hands-on Facebook group. I made a quick sketch of the design, put it in its separate layer, locked the image and the layer set the opacity to low and then start it with two rectangles from a prior design to get the proportions right. I start with the rectangle for the hull, put it in the main layer, add the path effect corners to round the bottom corners. I add two elongated rectangles for the rim. With the rectangle tool I can curve all four corners by adjusting the round handle. I select all three shapes, skew them and convert the hull into a pass. That way I can edit it with the note tool. I use rectangles and circles to block out the main shapes. Please keep in mind that this video is not an explainer of each and every tool. It shows you my workflow of creating something more complex from simpler shapes like circles and rectangles by combining them. In the process, I duplicate a lot to reuse existing elements, modify them slightly, color and shade them to create my design in relatively little time. It's a lot easier creating the flag at the mast without the angles. So I start with rectangles, align them, duplicate them and convert the last one to a pass so I can change its shape. I add the text one letter at a time. I position the letter centered to the rectangle before duplicating and changing each letter. I select a rectangle and a letter and skew them together. With the snapping on, it's easy to keep the same angles. The windows will be a combination of circles I create one, duplicate and scale, change the color or change the opacity for the shadow, then place shapes inside each other to create clip groups. The lighter copy of the frame will be placed inside the clip group of the darker one. Once I have the clip group, I paste on top of the clip layer. That way it is trimmed by the shape inside the clip layer. I use the same approach for the glass by creating a transparent rectangle. I duplicate that one. The nice thing about the rectangle is once I angle it and use the square handles, I can change the width and the length while maintaining the angle. I use two duplicates of the window for the hull and forgot to alter the light in the window right away. I will have to do that later to create some variation to not make the copies look identical. The door is another rectangle with the pass effect corners added. A major advantage of working with shapes is the fact that you can still alter them with the handles. I can elongate the inner door by moving the square handle and the change won't affect the corners. I use the pen tool to create a simple wood pattern for the door. An uneven line with a few notes that I set to smooth. Adjust the stroke widths and duplicate a few times. Modify slightly to match and then group and lower the opacity. In order to trim them, I make the darker shape of the inner door a clip group and paste the lighter shape and the lines inside. 
I reuse one of the windows for the door, scale it down and adjust the inside. It is a lot quicker to reuse what you've got on the screen already than create from scratch. The same applies to shading objects. I duplicate the shape, darken or lighten it and scale it. A lot of the time I find it easier to convert a basic shape into a pass and then modify it with the Node tool. Then draw the shape with, for example, the Pen tool. Once converted to a pass, I can select multiple nodes and scale, skew or rotate them together. I continue adding more rectangles and circles to the design, duplicating those shapes for shading or additional detail. Moving objects in the layer stack up and down to hide or bring them to the front is essential with this kind of workflow. So the page up, page down, the end and home key are essential. Knowing your way around with Boolean operation is another very handy skill. I combine those four circles with the path union and then cut them out of the shape below with the path difference. I am a little lazy with this shape and just shaded with a gradient using the darker color in the lower right to show that it is behind all the other shapes. For the fish's body, I start with a rounded rectangle. The pill shape is easily converted into a pass, giving me the nodes I need to quickly modify it into its curved shape that bends around the end of the hull. I can reuse the door as a fin, so I duplicate that one, alter it, color it and turn it into a pass so I can modify the bottom to match the shape I need. For the tail fin, I create a triangle, which is a star with just three corners. I can use the same shape for the waves in the front. I turn it into a pass and modify it with the node tool to curve the two parts at the top. Duplicate that one, scale it down and I have my two waves. I combine the triangle with the body of the fish via pass union and then shape the tail with the node tool. I reuse the fin, modify it with the node tool to match the shape I need for the top. I change the fill of the fish to a gradient. The problem is there is no gradient that curves. So in order to have the tail solid, I place a shape inside making the body a clip group. I do the same thing with the hull. In order to shade it, I turn it into a clip group. I place a smaller copy in a lighter color as well as two copies of the red rims inside. Duplicate the red rims and scale them down. The fact that these are rectangles make it easy to adjust them via the handles. I just move the square handle to scale them and adjust the curve with the round handle. Something went wrong with that shape so I replace it with a duplicate of the shape below. To shade these shapes I just use various versions in lighter color and smaller sizes. The alignment panel is a great help when you think that something might just be a little off. In this case, it was the smallest highlight in there.
using duplicates, changing them, coloring them slightly differently and placing them in the right position in the layer stack makes it really easy to quickly shade elements or give them a texture. For the boathouse, I want a texture on it. I just have a lighter color rectangle. I duplicate that, align them with even spacing and scale it slightly to match the widths. I group those rectangles and place them below the shadow. To give the hull some texture as well, I duplicate the lines from the door, place them inside the clip group that is the hull, scale them, skew them, rotate them and struggle a little bit. Working within a group can sometimes be tricky. I should have made those adjustments before placing the lines inside the clip group. For the door, I want some highlight. I use the pass effect offset on a duplicate of the door to get a smaller version that is evenly spaced. I give it a stroke with a gradient from lighter yellow to transparent. Copy that shape in order to paste the style on a duplicate of the circle that makes the window. Via edit, paste and style, I can just copy the style, in this case the outline with the gradient to this new circle. I duplicate it and reuse it for the other two windows. The great thing about vectors is it's easy to alter them. I duplicate the waves and make smaller versions using the pass effect offset. This makes it easy to create shapes for the shading that remain fully adjustable. For the texture of the fins, I create a straight line using the pen tool. I give it a gradient stroke, duplicate it and rotate it. I can use the same line for the top fin as well as the tail. I duplicate the shape of the fish to make a shadow shape inside the hull clip group and then add some more texture to the body. It's easy to go overboard on the texture. Quite often it is enough to have a few lines. I use a rectangle, turn it into a pill shape, give it a gradient and have my scale. I rotate that and duplicate it a few times. Just placing a few of them on the body is enough to define the texture. With all the main shapes in place, it's time to adjust some of the colors. The fin can do with a gradient and I don't like the colors of the banner. With the letters on top, it is not that easy to select the rectangles below. So I group the letters and lock them. You can as well hide an object to make it easier to access the element below and then bring it back up once you've done editing. This is the final design. I used basic shapes, text, clip groups, modified with the node tool, used a few lines, 
created with the pen tool and recycled a lot of my elements. Of course there's always room for improvement. I edit the seagulls and the open sign after I finished recording and adjusted the highlights in the window to not be identical. I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a try. Play around with simple shapes and just have some fun. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, turn on the notification and I will see you again soon.